We have some very special guests up in here. Dirty Dyke. Yeah, yeah. And Mr. Jam Baxter. What poppin'? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah, good man. Real good, real good man. Everything's blessed at the moment, man. Same old, same old. And um, what are we here to do? What are we here to do? We haven't actually discussed anything. Um, what are we here to do? <laughs> Shout some breeze, play some tunes, got some new exclusive stuff for you all, got hey. some uh, album tracks, got some got some forthcoming <coughs> forthcoming goodness. All of that. Okay, oh, all of that. Let's, let's just chat on your album, the um the uh, Rinse Out Friday, Spack Out Monday. Yeah, that's the one. If people don't know about this album, then um most importantly they're sleeping. <laughs> and uh, wake up. Yeah, just blatantly wake up. I mean, it's a sick album, man. I mean, Peter, hopefully people will know of you by now. Um, if they don't, they, they need to get to know, man. You're a sick lyricist, man. Thank you, you very much, I mean? man. Thank you and, very uh, much. And put on a good show as well. And the album, trust me, people, if you, if you don't have that in, in your collection now, then you best cop that. So tell, a little bit, tell people a little bit about uh, the, con the whole concept behind it. Um... Well, basically, like, um, I kind of like it, it became a double disc thing just because basically I wanted to work with two producers because I think the best for a solo project, especially working closely with one producer and getting like it's the best way to get a kind of coherent product. Um, like from start, I think like you know if you look at albums like Mad Villain, like you can tell that the producer MC relationship was strong throughout and. Um, so basically I wanted to work with Naive and Karen Fresh and I didn't want to mix their styles of production up because I didn't think that that would sound coherent so I split them up and then so that's how the whole double disc thing happened and then and then that's when I came up with the name Rinse Out Friday, Smack Out Monday because that that's the kind of the kind of lifestyle I was living because I moved back to London, got my 9 to 5 and then it just and then it just became straight up Rinse Out Friday and then me spacking out on my office on my office yeah, desk I kind of thought that would be the case yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Standard man, trying to trying to adjust to, to trying to real person, real responsibilities, that kind of shit. And um, hopefully people will know naive. I hadn't really known a creme fresh. Yeah, no, he keeps him he keeps himself on the low because he's got he like he he's been Secret making beats soul, he's been making beats for time. And he doesn't really push them and he doesn't really send them out. And I've just I was lucky lucky enough to have known him for a few years, so I just kind of like. I, I, he wouldn't really like, I'd just go around to his yard and he'd just play me a whole load of beats and I'd just be like, give me them. And I, now I'm lucky enough to be living with him as well, so, yeah, so so we kind of work closely on it. But, um, yeah, because he doesn't really push his beats to anyone, I'm I'm in the lucky position of, of, yeah, man, of having the look. whole back catalogue to sift through myself. Yeah, so. man, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a, there's some sick so, beats. Chicks is obviously the man behind the label and he's, um, he's, he's, but he's a fucking organised bear in the way that I never was, and so um, he obviously believed in the projects and wanted to push some, push some good music and breathe some more life into the scene. And um, so yeah, man, it was just a good, a good, a good hookup. Because then I just, I just got to concentrate on making the music, safe in the knowledge that that he'd be, he'd be, he'd be able to push it and do all of the like, get it on iTunes and all that stuff. That's that's a bit too complicated admin that I've never been good at. But. And uh, as he's fulfilled his his uh, his role as label manager, yeah, straight up, straight up, absolutely sm absolutely smashed it. Did you get um, any groupies on your tour? <laughs> we already had them. <laughs> standard, standard. Uh, I focus seems to be doing it right now. Yeah, you know, man, but, um, growing straight up, straight yeah, up, man. growing, man. Because um, obviously there's quite a few projects in the pipeline as well. So hopefully it's all about keeping consistent and churning out the, the good quality music and, yeah. and um, yeah. yeah, not letting things drift into obscurity and just 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 keep hitting people with the new. The new freshness, man, definitely. And um, Dirty Dyke is sat next to you, man. I heard your album's coming through, Indeed, through, the, through the label as well, man. Yeah. That's yeah. A good look, man. Yeah, it was a, a, a recent switch of decisions. I was with School Bully, but um, they just couldn't really offer me as much as I needed for the project sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's coming out of high focus now. Hype about it. A lot of good things happening, video made, blah, blah, blah. And when's that going to be coming? Uh, March is the plan. Good, 28th, good. I believe. Cool. You, and do you have a name yet? 
Uh, it's called Constant Dyke Star. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty straightforward title. The guy that produced the beat is called Mr. Constant. Uh, I don't know if he's been around for a while, but he never really pushed much of his stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I rate his beats. They're quite boom backish and like, you know, but he's, he smacks it. They're heavy and I like it. So I made, a, I made an album with him. It was meant to be much more of a sort of quick thing and churned out, but I had a lot of problems with uh, very close friend of mine who was mixing and mastering everything. He was going through some uh, problems at the time. So uh, it, it, went, it went a bit pear shaped for a while, but then Naive uh, saved it at the last minute. Oh, I see. That's yeah. a good look, man. Yeah. That's a good look. So Naive seems to be, uh, yeah, he's seems to be uh, doing the damage thing. right about the whole bootlegging side of things. It's difficult, yeah. man. Like you say, you know, people coming out and saying your yeah, album's dope, but how many of them have actually, you know, even spent a five on it, giving you a five or whatever at your show? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or, I mean, there's two sides to it because at the same time, I want as many people to hear the music as possible because, like, obviously that's the main thing. You make music because you want people to hear it and you want people to connect with it. So, like. In, the, in many ways that's a good thing but then at the same time it does definitely like it's, it's a bit i've just been learning recently just how much of an effect it does have on the sales and like if you don't if you don't make the money back that you outlay on the project of then course, yeah. you can't keep putting out the material and i think that's what a lot of people who aren't artists don't actually realize like how much effort goes into putting a release together Thank you. and how you've got to kind of you've got to kind of support it if you want if you want your your favorite artist to keep putting out quality material yeah. then you've got to, you've got to Fork out a bit of dough, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it wasn't like that when I was growing up. You know, we physically had to. Yeah, tapes, man. Yeah, even because like, yeah, even out, cause, like even, yeah, I'm you still, I'm tapes still... for each other, but that would be for you and your mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, going no, to like, people. I'm still yeah. fair. I'm still fair. But when I first got into it, like when I was like, you know, 14, 15, that was when Mr. Bongos and MSM were still up and running. Yeah. And like, you go down and like, you just hear all the latest 12 inches. Like, you get like Chris and Dez to play you all of like the newest 12 inches, and it would be. You'd go home with like an armful of vinyl and you'd listen to it from start to finish and it would be like a bit more of a special thing. Now people download five albums in a day, listen to the first 30 seconds of about five tunes and decide whether they like it. It's a bit yeah. less of a yeah. special kind of thing, I think, and that's, yeah. that's a bit of a shame, I think, definitely. So you got another album coming? Yeah, yeah, we do indeed. We do. We're, about, we're probably about halfway through it and we got all the beats picked for it. So, and um, yeah, it's shaping up to be good man obviously, like we're not using one producer for this one because obviously it's a collaborative album we've got some deep we've got like pete we've got quite a few pete cannon beats that we're using gonna use a couple karem like quite a fair bit of naive bit of mr constant maybe just kind of yeah mix mix it up and just pick pick the the, the queen with the crop from from the best producers that we know so this is you and dirty dyke yeah yeah that's me. we haven't got a title for it yet we were going to call it something quite silly, but then we realised that that was a bit of an in-joke that people wouldn't quite understand. Every time I told someone that, like, yeah, we're going to call it that, I won't say what it was. <laughs> uh, they would just kind of look at me blankly and just be like, I don't really get it. So we're like, oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't. So we'll think of something a bit more sensible. But yeah, that should, I don't know when, that should, I don't know when that's going to be out, because obviously there's Leafy's project, which is going to be fat, big up Leafy, which is coming out after... Dykes and then obviously Flipchix is working on his third album so I'm not sure where it's going to come in the order of things but yeah and these are all coming through High Focus yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah people that's what I'm talking about mm. High Focus doing the damage right now so just just stepping back a bit how did you guys you guys have known each other for a while just just tell the yeah. people about the whole SMB thing yeah. well yeah long story short basically I was with um I started I went to school with Ronnie Bosch from from Concept Play who's working at a pub so I can't be here tonight we've got Ronnie Bush and um, and then I moved down to I moved down to Brighton in the vain attempt of getting a degree and dropped out and whatever but um, I met Mr Key while I was down there uh, from Cambridge and then and then we, we started having cyphers making tunes so it kind of made sense to, to, to put him in the crew as well and then he was like Oh right, you got to hear my man Dirty Dyke as well. He's he's just come out of the clink, started writing bars, um, and so yeah, he introduced me to to Dyke, who introduced me to Scissor Tongue, and then that that became the the the, the lineup, the lineup for the crew, and um, yeah, so we were linked up through that was like a few years ago, about going back about three or four years. And so, um, so I think I first heard of you lot through probably through um, delegates. Yeah. Yeah, from, um, yeah, yeah, from um, probably from uh, B B one oh nine. Yeah, because yeah. he helped us out with the first contact play album. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That was a wicked name for an album, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still to this day.